Hey guys, welcome back to Hawkeye Star Rail. In today's video, we're going through a Jing Liu guide. We're going to go through her skills and abilities, her play style, her traces, her relics, light cones, and eidolons, and then finishing it off with teams. And I will leave timestamps in the description if you want to jump around, but we also have the code that comes out with every new character. So I'll leave that in the description and the pinned comment so you can get those free jades because, hey, free stuff is nice. So kicking it off, let's go through her skill set. Her basic attack, you can basically ignore the this, you never want to use this. If you're using this, it means you've been in a pickle and you've ran out of skill points. Just ideally never use it. Next up is her skill, which has two forms. The basic skill will cost a skill point, deal single target damage, and grant her one stack of Syzygy, which we'll talk about more in her talent. But then when it is enhanced, it's not going to cost a skill point, but it will reduce her stacks of Syzygy by one, and the damage it deals will be cleave, meaning primary main damage on the primary target with splash damage to the adjacent targets. Next up is her ultimate, which costs 140 energy, which does cleave damage, being main damage on the primary target once again, and splash damage on the adjacent targets. And this one will also grant her one stack of Syzygy. Next up is her talent. And basically for this one, once she reaches two stacks of Syzygy, which she gains from using her unenhanced skill and also her ultimate, but also her technique, which we'll talk about in a sec. Once she reaches two stacks, her action will be advanced forward by 100%. And she will get a beefy crit rate bonus of 47% at level eight, which is really, really nice. So obviously you can creep that up with a few more traces. Um, but then on top of that, when she attacks in this state, she's going to consume 4% of her allies' max HP to increase the damage dealt by up to 157% of her attack. Once again, that is at level 8. Now, once she runs out of Syzygy stacks, she will go back to her normal state where she will have to generate them back up to 2 stacks to enter that state again. And then we have her technique. So when she uses this in the open world, uh, which she'll have like a swirling storm around her that enemies that come in contact will be frozen. Then when she enters combat with them, she will immediately gain energy uh, and one stack of Syzygy and have a 100% base chance to freeze the enemies. Next up, I wanted to go through some combat tips before we get into her traces, builds, and all that sort of stuff. So when we look at her ultimate, ideally you want to be using this in the transmigration state. It will grant her an extra stack of Syzygy, prolonging it, but also because she has a trace that will increase its damage during, uh, during the transmigration state, but also because when she's out of that transmigration state, she'll be losing that big 47 to 50% crit rate buff that you know she has depending on your trace levels which is really going to harm her damage in that ultimate so ideally you want to be using that ultimate during transmigration state to prolong it more than anything the other thing that you can do is if you're using an enhanced skill which is your last enhanced skill uh in your syzygy stack so you're in one stack of syzygy uh and you're about to use it but it brings you up to full energy if you spam that ultimate so that she uses it before her turn technically ends you can actually get that ultimate off while still in the transmigration state and then prolong it for another turn so you've got to be quick on those fingers pressing it because if you let her turn end after that final syzygy stack and then use her ultimate she will use it outside of the transmigration state now look at her traces as always you're going to want to pick up all the bonus abilities the first one giving her an extra 10 percent action forward after using transcendent flash which is her non-enhanced skill which means it just reduces the time she spends out of transmigration state then the next one while in transmigration state she increases her effect resistance by 35 percent this is good for a wide range of reasons she's also a destruction unit having higher than average taunt values so the fact that she can resist some stuff is going to be helpful as well and then the final one is going to be that one that i mentioned earlier where whilst in transmigration state she increases her damage of her ultimate by 20 percent as for our skills the basic attack you can completely ignore you never really want to be using this thing and if you do having a bit of extra damage on it ain't really going to change the world for you so you can completely leave that at one if you want to and not stress about it the one you're going to want to upgrade the most and first is going to be the skill giving her the biggest damage increase you will want to upgrade the other two as well but if you're looking to optimize i would do the skill first as for the stats that she brings she brings crit damage she brings speed and a little bit of hp you just want to pick up all of these the only optional hp that you could leave out uh, without missing out on any crit damage uh, 
damage or speed is this one over here, which is really cheap anyway, so you may as well just pick it up and fill out the complete roster. Now let's take a look at her relic sets. First of all, the four set bonuses that I look to are going to be Hunter of Glacial Forest, Ice Damage, which is really nice because she doesn't have any in her traces or her abilities at all. Uh, and then we also have the extra crit damage after she uses her ult. The other four set that I like if you're using Pella or Silver Wolf on your team, especially if the enemy is weak to Quantum, is going to be the Brilliant Stars set because you do get to stack that extra defense reduction or the defense ignoring if you will which just scales more better the more you have so you really want to have silver wolf or pella on your team if you are using this set but if you like me and farm this set a ton and got a couple sets of it then you can slap this on without having to farm for something else the other four set that you can get away with is the musketeer of wild wheat but this is a very low priority for me the others are much better in my opinion um this one giving attack and speed the basic attack damage you can pretty much ignore because she doesn't really use her basic attack so that is like a desperation build if you're or, you know, if you spent your whole time farming Musketeer of Wildweed, it's still not a horrid option. As for the two and two set bonuses you can look to, Hunter of the Glacial Forest is going to be an ideal two set because she gets that ice damage. As mentioned before, she doesn't have any of that really in her kit innately. So stacking as much of it as we can is going to be really beneficial. Now you can pair that up with a two piece of the messenger set because you get that extra speed, which is really nice. Or you can pair it with the Musketeer of Wildweed two piece for that extra attack attack but she does have a ton of attack scaling in her kit so i would prefer to pair this with the speed as for the main stat on your body piece i would look to crit damage now you're going to want at least 70 percent crit rate after she gets her buff from her talent, which is at level 8, 47%. So ideally, you shouldn't really need crit rate on this slot to achieve that because substats aren't really too great that you need to achieve. But, you know, if that's the case, then you can get away with crit rate if you're like really early game or something like that. But in general, crit damage is going to be the play on the chest. Whereas on the feet, I look to speed in pretty much every situation. Um, there's always an argument that can be made for attack on boots. But with her having so much attack scaling, I feel like the speed is... Is just going to benefit her more allowing her to act more and do more damage essentially then for planner ornament sets the no-brainer one is going to be the rutilant arena this is the optimal set for her you do have to reach that 70 percent crit rate but you're only worried about that while she's in the transmigration state which as i mentioned earlier is really really easy to obtain when you have such a big bonus innate crit rate through her talent so this is going to be the one that you get uh it's going to give her skill damage increase which is fantastic because skill is where she does a chunk of her damage so you definitely want to put her on this set if you can. If you don't have any yet, then you can always look to the Salsotto or the Space Ceiling Station, but those two are definitely behind Rutilant, which is my number one choice. As we look into stats for the orb, it's a no-brainer. You want that ice damage. As we've mentioned before, she doesn't have any other ice damage in her kit, so you really want to stack that as much as possible through the gear set on the relics and also through the orb on the planners. So that is what you're going to want to aim for here here over on the rope uh, attack is still the best option in my opinion i do see a future in which maybe energy regeneration becomes a thing how maybe if we get another support that offers a certain amount of energy or a, a light cone for a support character or something like that i feel like in the future energy regeneration could be a thing but in general she has to land too many kills and get hit too many times to make it a massive massive difference um, but i wouldn't be surprised if people do find ways to use energy regeneration so it's not completely off the table, but attack is just the safer bet at this stage. Next up is Lycones. For this, her best in slot, as always, is going to be the Signature Lycone. They don't make them the Signature Lycone for no reason. This one gives her the crit damage. It gives her stacking damage buff, which is completely suited to her because she's going to proc it every turn when she's in transmigration state because she's absorbing HP from her allies. And then on top of that, she also gets the ability to ignore more defense, which is something she really loves because especially if you're playing her with Pella or Silverwolf, it's just going to synergize super well, helping amplify that damage. So Singular Lycone, by far the best one, but not one, not needed by any stretch of the imagination to make her work if you are a free-to-play player. So let's look at some other options. And the first one is on the Fall of an Eon. This is the Herder Shop Lycone. They're easier to get to Super in position 5 than even 4 stars in most situations. So this one's fantastic. It's going to be the go-to free-to-play choice I can see. 
Also, if you did happen to pull Clara's light cone and you don't have anyone to use it on, this one can get away fine if you're already using the Herder Shop light cone on someone else. I'm not going to go through things like Blade's light cone because if you pull Blade's light cone, it's probably on Blade and that's probably where it should stick. For four star options, my favorite one is going to be a secret veil. This one's going to give her a base increase to damage dealt. Then depending on HP percentages, she could get an even bigger boost. But this is the one I would go to if I was looking at a four star option. Then as a bit of a copium take, if you've had the worst light cone luck in the world and you have none of them and you've burnt all your herder shop resources on other light cones, you can look to collapsing sky as a three star option. But once again, that is in an absolute desperation sense. Now let's quickly touch on Eidolons. I don't like to spend too much time on these because I know a lot of free to play players aren't even looking at this, but we'll go through it quickly. Uh, at one, it's actually quite nice for her single target damage boost, but that's not really her biggest issue. Then for number Number two, it's going to give us some extra damage, 80% extra damage on her next enhanced skill after using her ultimate. Level four is once again, you guessed it, going to be more damage, increasing the multiplier cap that she gets from consuming her allies HP. And then at six, this is not affecting too many people, but if you get it, grats, you get an absolute beast of a damage dealer. Uh, when she enters the transmigration state, she's going to obtain an extra stack. So she's going to go straight to three stacks of Syzygy. And then it's also going to increase her crit damage by an additional 50% in that transmigration state. Now I wanted to talk about teams for Jing Liu. She's honestly a really flexible unit to build. You can build her as a hyper carry or you can build her in a double DPS team. So I want to talk about some of the characters you can put in her team with her. When we look to supportive options, we have the defense breakers, which are going to be Pella and Silverwolf. Both really nice. Pella having that ice synergy with her. Silverwolf being able to change the weaknesses. Um, you know, if you've got a brilliant star set on it, then enemy's already weak to ice you can change the second another weakness to uh quantum and then get that additional damage boost they're both great options depending on situations uh then when we look to the other supportive type units that you have uh my favorites are bronya ting yun and asta if you have an e6 yukong you can probably get away with that as well i'm not as big of a fan of yukong myself but these three depending if you have if you're free to play and you've missed out on a bronya so far you can definitely get away with ting yun and asta but bronya is going to be really nice for her then as we move on to the rest of the things we talk about double dps teams you can use things like blade or clara are my two favorite ones but you can really get away with any other dps unit in these types of teams that covers the elements uh, elemental weakness of the boss and just play around with it like that she obviously has a great synergy with blade being able to give him extra stacks of his passive along the way which is fantastic to get his follow-up attack faster but um yeah you can pretty much put her with anything ideally my favorite one is blade especially if the boss is or the enemy is weak to wind so then we have some example teams so this is sort of hyper carry type of jing liu once again you can sub out bronya for any of the buffers if you don't have these units or they're already being used on the other side you can sub out pella for that silver wolf you can run it as double supportive but i do definitely like that defense break in the team as well and then you have a healer that can sustain the team in this case we have lordsha if you don't have him you can always use uh, your links or natasha just whatever you have essentially to fill that position then the next team we're going to look at is going to be that double DPS team, which is going to be Jing Liu, then one of your other DPS. Like I said, Blade is my favorite. I do like the idea of Clara as well, especially if the enemy's weak to physical, but you can bring just about any DPS you want in this spot that's going to cover the weaknesses of the enemy. Uh, then we have a supportive character. In this case, I've put Pella, but you can use any of the supporting characters in this position and do perfectly fine. Then the final slot is going to be once again for your healer. I got Loacha there as an example, but you can really shuffle it around. So she's one of those units that just works really well in just about anything. She's a heavy DPS unit that also doesn't really use too many skill points, which is fantastic. So she's pretty flexible in the builds that you could do. And honestly, she's got a defensive break type as well. So hopefully survival won't be the biggest issue, especially if you're normally going to be using her against enemies weak to ice. It allows you to buy that extra time if you are struggling with your survival units. Maybe you haven't pulled one of the good healers or something like that. Then, you know, you're pretty much safe with that. So that is going to be it for Jingling really really powerful damage dealer and she's just an all-round fun character to play because it just feels like she's taking so many turns and getting to do a lot in her gameplay which is fantastic also very skill point efficient and basically splashable in just about anything you want to build her in so fantastic unit to pull if you are looking for that hyper carry type unit that is very versatile as always guys thanks for watching hope you have an awesome day and i look forward to seeing the next one cheers